Here we have a simple GraphQL schema with Express.js. We have a schema of users that has a name and email, and we have a resolver that returns some mock data. Inside of Graphical, if we run the query to fetch our user, you'll see we'll get a name and email that is completely mocked. We also have a mutation that just returns whatever we pass inside of the input argument. In this video, we look at creating our own custom GraphQL Scala or scalar types. Let's now have a look at the big in GraphQL Scala types. We have int, float, string, boolean, and id, and these are part of the GraphQL specification. But as we'll see in just a moment, there are times we'll want to write our own scalars. So we have UUID, date, JSON, latitude, longitude, RGBA, currency, and for this video, we will create a custom email address scala type. To get started, I have GraphQL installed with this project, as well as Express and the GraphQL tools schema. Inside of the type definitions, I need to type Scala and then email address. Email address will be the name of the Scala. I then need to update wherever that Scala is used. Here for the user email and the input user input type, I also replace email with email address. Then if I open Graphical and I open the Documentation Explorer, if I dive into the user, I can see we have an email address for the email of that user. Now back inside of our project, we need to import from GraphQL the GraphQL Scala type. This allows us to define a custom GraphQL Scala. So to define a new GraphQL Scala, I will create a new variable and I will call this GraphQL email address and we'll instantiate that GraphQL Scala type. The GraphQL Scala type utility takes in the name, description, serialize, parse value and parse literal inside of the object. So let's go ahead and define the GraphQL email address config for the GraphQL Scala type. We'll first pass the name of email address and then we'll write a short description. And this is what we'll show inside of that type inside of the documentation explorer. Then if we just pass serialize, pass value and pass literal functions, we can then just return the value of all of those. Then we'll pass the config to the instantiate GraphQL Scala type utility. And then further down, we'll add the actual email address to the email address Scala type definition inside of our resolver. Now, if we load the graphical playground and we load the query for users, if we now open the email address, you can see that we have the description for the email address Scala type. And if we make any queries to fetch all of our users or mutate, that will be returned as it was normally. Now let's create a regex. We'll insert regex that conforms to the RFC 822 format of the internet messages. Then we'll write the first function, which will be validate. This will take in the value that is passed and we'll do some checks in here. We'll check to see whether that this is a string and if it is not, we'll throw a GraphQL error and we'll check that the string or the value we've passed also conforms and matches the email address regex. And if that is not, we'll also throw the error. Then we'll return the value. Let's update the serialize function and parse value function to run the validate function. Don't forget to import GraphQL error from the GraphQL package. Now if we load the graphical interface and we try to create a mutation, but we add an incorrect email address and run this, you'll see we now have that value is not a valid email address and the actual value we passed. Now let's continue updating the config and now we'll write the parse a literal function. This takes in the AST, so you actually get access to the kind of AST or the kind of the value that is passed to us. So let's import kind from the GraphQL package. Then if the kind is not a string, we will throw an error. Then we'll return the validate function with that value from the AST. Now inside of Graphical, if we try to pass anything that is not a string, this will result in an error. So while this video has covered creating a custom GraphQL scalar for email address, you could cover this for many other use cases as shown here and much more.